Hello and welcome to Sioux Falls Water Reclamation Treatment Plant. My name is Dennis and I am one of 10 operators along with many maintenance and lab personnel who work at this facility in northeastern Sioux Falls. Today in this short tour of the plant I'm going to explain how we reclaim wastewater produced by the City of Sioux Falls. First, I would like for you to keep in mind that we clean wastewater by removing solids out of the water by gravity. You will see that after each phase of treatment, the solids removed will be pumped to the stream of solids going to the anaerobic digesters. The wastewater flow continues from each process to the next until it reaches the Big Sioux River. The reclamation process begins with influent wastewater coming from the sanitary sewer lines and flowing into these screens. The influent flows through the quarter inch circular bar screens to filter out the big stuff that inadvertently gets into the wastewater flow. Stuff like rags, toys, and even false teeth. As the debris collects on the screens and the water level starts to back up, the float on the right hand side will turn the auger spray bar on and the rake teeth connected to that auger. This action cleans big items out of the screen, dropping them into an auger. A conveyor belt carries the debris away where it falls into a dumpster and is hauled away to a landfill. In this tank, air is being bubbled through the wastewater, creating a rolling stirring action that releases organic solids from the grit and sand in the flow. This grit settles to the bottom of the tank and is also sent to the dumpster. If we didn't screen out the big stuff in the grit, it would get into valves and pumps, plugging them and causing damage. These screens are capable of handling up to 35 million gallons a day. Our average flow runs around 14 to 15 million gallons a day. The wastewater treatment process continues with these four primary clarifiers that measure 90 feet across with a sidewall depth of 8 feet. These clarifiers are designed to slow down the flow, creating what is called detention time. Slowing the flow allows heavy suspended solids to settle to the bottom of the clarifier. At this point, it becomes what we call primary sludge. Inside this clarifier, you can see the rotating sweep. The bar on the surface is collecting grease and dumping it into a pit for later removal to the digesters. The solids that settle to the bottom are pushed to the center of the clarifier by angled blades or plows. These solids will be pumped out of the clarifier to the thickener. Inside the sludge pump building, there is a set of pumps for each clarifier. In the lower level, you can see the Marlow piston pumps at work. The Marlows are set up on timers so that we can make adjustments to match how fast the solids are settling in the clarifier. Currently, the timers for each pump are set to run about seven minutes out of every half hour. Looking down the tunnel, you see the piping used to pump these sorted solids. Primary sludge gets pumped to the thickener and scum or grease is pumped to the primary digesters. I'll explain more about this later. A thickener is like a small clarifier. The sludge flow coming in here from the bottom of the primary clarifiers is around 2-3% to solids. Since we don't have as large volume of flow going through the thickener, it doesn't need to be as big. In here, the sludge solids that settle to the bottom are concentrated to around 6%. This concentration of solids saves money by keeping the digester size small. When sludge is pumped from the thickener to the digester, it goes through a heat exchanger. This warms the sludge to 99 degrees Fahrenheit. Think of making bread at home. You mix flour, sugar, water, yeast, and a pinch of salt, and you let it rise in a warm place. As it rises, the yeast breathes and feeds off the sugars and the carbs in the flour to produce gas, raising the dough and producing the wonderful smell we associate with homemade bread. Well, in anaerobic digestion, the digester is a warm place and bacteria replace the yeast. These are anaerobic mesophilic bacteria. They grow at a temperature of around 99 degrees, which is the mesophilic part. They get their energy from breaking down sugars, fats, and other organic compounds to make methane gas, which can be used to run our electrical generators. 
Unfortunately, the smell of methane gas isn't as pleasing as homemade bread. Another reason we use mesophilic anaerobic digestion is that these bacteria are very efficient at breaking down the sludge into simple nutrients that can be used on farm fields. Many farmers in this local area like to use our sludge because of the high levels of ammonia, nitrogen, and phosphorus that is a natural occurring part of the digestion process. This facility has four anaerobic digesters where this digestion takes place. They are 65 feet in diameter and 31 feet deep with floating covers for gas collection. Here in Energy Recovery, we house the two original CAT engine generators rated at 415 kilowatts. In the background, you can see our new Genbacher engine, which is rated at 800 kilowatts. These engines run off the methane gas produced by our digesters, supplying at least 30% and at times up to 65% of this plant's electrical needs. The two boilers shown here are rated at 6.9 million BTUs each and are also operated on methane gas. These boilers can be used to heat the digester when the engine generators are not in service. The hot water storage tank holds 26,000 gallons of water and is heated by the engines used to co-generate electricity. The Sioux Falls Water Reclamation Plant strives to be energy efficient and sustainable by using available resources retrieved from the wastewater in the form of biogas produced by the digesters. This view of the ceiling reveals how complex and interrelated everything is in this room, from the heat exchangers and water pipes to the gas lines and ventilation. As mentioned earlier, the methane gas produced by the digesters collects in the floating covers on top of the digester and is pumped from the secondary digester cover to a 51-foot diameter gas storage sphere. This sphere can store 69,456 cubic feet of biogas for use by the engine generators. These covered dome structures are the first and second stage trickling filters. The wastewater flow from the primary clarifiers and the thickener flow over here by gravity. As we look inside, we can see the wastewater flow being sprayed over a rock bed that is 135 feet across and 7 feet deep. Remember, in the primary clarifiers, we were removing settleable solids. In the trickling filters, we are biologically removing suspended solids and dissolved solids. Look closer and you will see a slimy buildup on the rocks. This is called zuglia, which is a lot like the slippery buildup of algae, bacteria, and other organisms that you find on rocks in lakes and streams. As the wastewater flows over these rocks, these organisms grow by eating nutrients that are in the wastewater. As zuglia grow, they get heavy and fall to the bottom of the filters and are carried with the flow to the first stage intermediate clarifiers. These have now become settleable solids that end up on the bottom of the intermediate clarifiers. This same process is repeated in the second stage trickling filters and clarifiers. These solids flow to the process pump where they are pumped to the solid stream going to the digesters. The amazing part of this process is that the zuglia has converted 63 to 80% of the suspended solids and turn them into settleable solids. The wastewater flow also continues to the process pump station where it is pumped to the aeration basin. Essentially, that's what wastewater treatment is all about, finding mechanical or biological ways to remove water contaminants by mimicking nature, but at a more concentrated or accelerated rate than happens in lakes and streams. The process pump station, like the heart in your body, pumps the various flows into the plant and to the locations where they need to go. The solids from the intermediate clarifiers are pumped back up to the grid unit to be resettled in the primary clarifiers and sent to the digesters. The recirculation pumps can be used when needed 
to send flows back up to the first or second stage trickling filters for retreatment if needed. The transfer pumps send the rest of the flow to the aeration basin for the next stage of treatment. We use a SCADA computer program with viewing monitors in several of the buildings so that we can see what's happening in and around the plant from almost any location. SCADA stands for Supervisor, Control, and Data Acquisition. From this SCADA station, the operator can monitor plant operations. We can control timers, turn pumps on or off as needed, check oxygen levels in the aeration basins, and regulate chemical dosages used in treatment. We are also monitoring pump stations around the city of Sioux Falls, the flow equalization basin, and the Brandon Road pump station. SCADA sounds a warning alarm indicating when plant systems aren't working properly. One example of an alarm going off would be pump failure. The operator would then respond by going on site to check the pump and evaluate the problem. SCADA also collects the 24-hour totals that we need when making day-to-day -day wastewater treatment calculations. If you've ever wondered, what will I use algebra for, you've come to the right place. Operators have to use mathematical formulas every day in their work. SCADA is a neat tool that allows operators to see what is going on, not only in the plant, but also around the city of Sioux Falls. The activated sludge system is a challenging balance between air supply, number of microorganisms, and food supply. This is an aerobic process, which means that the bacteria in the aeration basins need a lot of oxygen. There are many kinds of bacteria in the aeration basin. Some of the bacteria, like stock ciliates, form colonies. Other bacteria, such as rotifers, look like bugs swimming in the water. Managing the bacteria is a lot like managing a herd of livestock. We provide oxygen to the bacteria by adjusting the speed or amperage of these 800 horsepower blowers that force almost 1,500,000 cubic feet of air into the basin every day. The bigger the herd, the more air they need. The size of the bacteria herd depends on the variable amount of food supplied in the wastewater known as the food to microorganism ratio. Operators have little control over the rate that the food is supplied in the flow, but we can increase or decrease the number of bacteria in the basins. More food coming in means we need to increase the herd size. Less food means we need to decrease the herd size. We do this by wasting a calculated percentage of the bacteria over to the digester solid streams keeping the herd young and healthy. The herd size is measured by the sludge volume index, or SVI. This test evaluates the pounds of microorganisms in the herd. The activated sludge system is a continuous process by which bacteria consume ammonia and remove most of the wastewater contaminants. These bacteria's consumption converts ammonia into nitrates. Ammonia is very toxic to aquatic life. If we discharge ammonia into the Big Sioux River, it could cause fish or other wildlife to die off. By converting the ammonia into nitrate, the water is no longer toxic to anything living in the river. After the water flows through the activated sludge basin, the microorganisms come into the final clarifier heavy, full of food and ready for a rest. The slower water flow in the clarifier allows the activated sludge organisms to settle out of the water, forming a blanket of solids on the bottom. By the time the activated sludge organisms form this blanket in the final clarifiers, they are very hungry and ready to eat again. These activated sludge bacteria remain in the aeration basin for almost 13 days. The water that leaves the final clarifiers is pretty clean at this point. 
We have removed almost 88% of all the organic matter that originally flowed into the water reclamation facility. As the water leaves the final clarifiers, it flows into the effluent filters where the remaining solids are strained out by the filter media. The water that comes into the filter units flows through eight filter cells that contain almost three feet of anthracite in each cell. The wastewater flows through a series of troughs and is evenly distributed over the filter media where it flows down through the media. These filters are controlled by a new computer that is programmed to clean each filter during the evening hours. The computer automatically opens and closes all the right valves to allow the filters to be taken out of operation and cleaned, straining any remaining solids in the water. The computer also turns on a water pump and air blower that are used to force water and air through the bottom of the filter media and washes all the solids caught in the media back to the front of the plant where these solids eventually work their way towards the digesters. After the water passes through the effluent filters, the water continues onto the chlorine contact basin and is disinfected from the months of May 1st through October 1st, as required by the South Dakota Department of Environmental and Natural Resources. This is not necessary during the colder months of November through April. Our disinfection process uses 12.5% liquid sodium hypochlorite which is a very strong chlorine bleach. When compared to the 5.5% bleach that is used in homes to disinfect surfaces or to wash and whiten clothes. Sodium hypochlorite bleach kills fecal bacteria that can be harmful to people who go swimming in the Big Sioux River. Our goal is to get the fecal count down to less than 200 colonies per 100 milliliters of sampled water. We actually reduce the fecal count down to less than 15 before discharging into the river. Before we discharge water into the river, we also remove any remaining chlorine from the water by another chemical called sodium bisulfite, which reacts with the chlorine and completely neutralizes any remaining chlorine in the water. By the time the water is discharged into the Big Sioux River, it spends almost 18 hours flowing through our plant. The Sioux Falls Water Reclamation Facility has removed over 30,000 pounds a day of organic material and 5,000 pounds of ammonia. Put another way, the discharged water is 98% cleaner than when it entered the plant. The Sioux Falls Water Reclamation Facility is staffed with a proud team of mechanics, laboratory analysts, and plant operators who work hard every day to guarantee the best water treatment possible and to improve the quality of the water in the Big Sioux River. As mentioned earlier, the digester stabilized sludge and that sludge is eventually sent out to the farmer's fields to help add nutrients to their crops. Every year, the digesters produce almost 2,500 tons of sludge that can be land applied to farmer's fields. We actually call this sludge biosolids, which means that the sludge has been fully stabilized by the microbiology in the digesters and is now safe to put on farmer's fields. Every year, just after the snow melts and the soil softens from the winter freezing, our biosolids crew starts up the dredge boat that you see in the video and pumps almost 4,500 gallons of biosolids into these tanker trucks. The biosolids crew then drives out to the assigned farmer's fields and begins to land apply the biosolids into the field. Because the amount of ammonia, nitrogen, and phosphorus in the biosolids are so high, our biosolids crew closely monitors the soil condition to make sure the levels of the nutrients don't get too high. If they did, then it's possible that the farmer's fields will not produce its best potential crop yield. So our biosolids crew goes to great lengths to make sure that just the right amount 